Delegation is one of the most important skill that you should learn if you want to become a successful executive virtual assistant. Now, what is delegation? Basically, delegation simply means being able to delegate tasks to another person. That's what an executive would do. But for the executive virtual assistant side, it's us finding tasks to delegate for ourselves without even waiting for our clients to delegate it to us. Having that skill to be able to find tasks to delegate to ourselves is actually the skill that sets an executive virtual assistant apart from other virtual assistants out there. And since this is a very special skill that executive virtual assistants should always have, it's not that really easy to gain that skill. You would really need to have a lot of practice, make sure that you know your client very well for you to be able to find things that you can delegate for yourself. Even on the side of the client, it's very easy to become a very good delegator, especially if that client is someone who is hiring an executive VA for the first time. So if you want to be an executive virtual assistant that would really stand out among the rest, having that skill of being able to identify things that you can delegate for yourself will definitely give you an edge among others. And of course, that would definitely attract premium clients. Because like I mentioned, some executives are not good delegators. It's very, very hard for an executive to be able to start delegating tasks to their executives. So make sure to listen to all of the tips that I'm going to give you in this video so that you can improve your delegation skills and get that premium client that you want. First thing that you are going to do, especially when you already have a client, is to make sure that you understand your client's priorities. When would you know what your client's priorities are? Definitely this happens during a discovery call or when you start to get to know your client. This is the time when you try to find out why they are interested in hiring a virtual assistant. Or when you are giving a pitch to a potential client, this is the time where you try to identify what their pain points are based on the background that you got from their business or their personal lives. How would you know their priorities? You should ask open-ended questions to your clients, like what are their personal and professional goals? What other things would you like to do if somebody else is doing all of the things that you're currently doing right now? So these questions will definitely help you have an idea what your client's priorities and goals are. And from there, you will be able to identify what tasks you can delegate to yourself. Next thing that you are going to do if you already have an idea what their goals are is to make sure that you try to understand each and every expectation for each goal that your client has. Having a general idea of your client's career or professional goals is not enough for you to be a better executive virtual assistant who is great in delegation skills. But you should know the process, the priorities for each of the goal that your client has so that you can have a better understanding on how to reach those goals. Knowing the process from start to end of each of your client's priorities, you will be able to identify how you're going to help them from every step of the way. And that process in between start and end of each priority or each goal is definitely going to be a, a gold mine of tasks that you can delegate for yourself. So make sure that whenever you find out a goal or a priority for your client, make sure to get all of the details so you know what tasks you can identify and delegate to yourself. Once you have a client and you're starting to get to know your client well, you will have an idea of the things that they are doing most of the time. These are the things that they do on a weekly basis, on a daily or on a monthly basis. On that note, making sure that you identify repetitive tasks that your client are doing is also going to help you improve your delegation skills. As an executive virtual assistant, you're definitely going to have access to your client's calendar, whether it be personal or professional calendar. Sometimes they're just using one calendar for both professional and personal tasks. 
Looking for tasks or looking for events that are repetitive or recurring would definitely give you an idea of, hey, you can delegate these tasks to me already. These repetitive tasks you can see probably like a haircut, a dentist appointment, a, any type of doctor's appointment, a dinner, a birthday, an anniversary. These are types or different types of repetitive tasks that you can delegate to yourself. Grocery shopping, shopping for birthday gifts or holiday gifts. These are things that also you can delegate for yourself and you can definitely find them in your client's calendar or sometimes in their inbox. These tasks are something that you don't have to actually wait for your client to tell you to do. You can tell your client that, hey, I see here you have a doctor's appointment or a dentist's appointment six months ago. Would you like me to schedule you for another appointment this coming week? It's already coming six months from your last dentist's appointment or probably probably a lunch or a dinner or probably a schedule, a massage schedule when you think that your client is already burnt out or already overworked. These are simple tasks that you can delegate to yourself without your client's prior approval. But of course, all you have to do is let them know that these are the things that can be easily delegated to you. Another way to improve your delegation skills is to make sure that you identify your own strengths. Like what are you good at? If you are good at editing videos, creating stuff in Canva, or probably you are great in travel management or good at event management. These are the things that you can help your client with. Like for example, you saw on their inbox that they're planning an event like a year-end event for the company. You can already inform your client that, hey, I saw on your inbox you're planning an event soon. If it's okay with you, I can take on this project. So those are some of the things that you can do. Identifying your own strength and what your skill sets are, what you're good at. Probably a hobby that you're doing is something that can be turned into a strength. Is something that you can always highlight and bring that strength to the table and take those tasks away from your client because you know that you're good at that task. On top of identifying your strengths so that you know what you can do for your client is also getting to know the industry trends and of course some cultural trends as well. When we say industry trends, get to know what is happening in your client's business. When we talk about cultural trends, get to know what's happening in your client's city, your client's country, your client's state. Most of our clients are based in the US. And for example, your client is based in New York. You can definitely look at what's trending or what events are trending in um, Broadway, your client might like watching a Broadway play. So you can look at what are the upcoming shows in Broadway that you can suggest to your client that, you know, they might want to check out. They might want to go with the date with their partner. And this is the big play coming out soon on Broadway. So make sure that you don't just wait for your client to say, hey, it looks like I want to go to the theater this weekend. Don't wait for them to tell that to you. Anticipate what your client might want to do. And there's no harm in suggesting activities for your client. So it's very important for you to identify trends, whether it's within the company or trends around the city or the country. That's because... That's also a gold mine of things that you can delegate to yourself. This will show your client that you're going above and beyond and will definitely showcase that you are an amazing executive assistant and they cannot live without you because you make life so much easier and so much enjoyable for them. Another way to improve your delegation skills is to identify tasks that are time sensitive. As executive virtual assistants, most of the time we have access to our client's whole life, both personal and professional. You have access to their inbox text. You have access to their calendar. You have the numbers of all of their family members and their 
business partner, their colleagues. You have the number and emails of all of their teams. So you know what's happening with your client's life on a day-to-day basis. Identifying tasks that are time sensitive is something that you can tell your client that you can take on or that you can delegate to yourself so that your client can focus on other things and don't get rattled about these time sensitive tasks. As long as these tasks are something that your client can delegate to you, make sure that you identify them and ask your client, hey, you know what, this item that you are currently doing is already required to be submitted by the end of the week and looks like based on your calendar, you don't have enough time to finish this task. Can you provide me with details on how I can complete this and I can definitely do this for you. Showing them that you can take on projects, whether be small or big, will definitely make them realize what an important part you are to the team. This will also allow you to showcase your other skills and will give value to your work. Knowing that your client can trust you with big or small projects is definitely going to elevate you in your role. You can probably be promoted to a chief of staff or a senior executive virtual assistant. You might even get a raise in the next few months because you're showing more of what you are capable of instead of just doing tasks or waiting for your client to assign tasks to you. Now that you already have an idea as to how will you find tasks that you can delegate to yourself, you've asked them about things you found on their calendar, things you found on their inbox. You've asked your client that you can take on small or big projects. It is very, very important that you ask your client for feedback on each of the tasks that you were able to identify that you can delegate for yourself. Always ask for detailed and constructive feedback whenever you have your check-ins with your client. These feedback that your client will provide you will definitely improve the way you delegate things or improve your delegation skills. That's because from the feedback, you would know what your client likes, what your client appreciated in terms of the output that you provided, or what your client would like you to improve more on. Based on those feedback, you can know or you will be able to know that, okay, these type of um, projects are the things that my client really appreciated and he really liked. Um, These projects are projects that he thinks I can still improve on. So you can get more tasks or you can identify more tasks that are similar to what your client likes. And then you can start upskilling yourself in all of those um, other tasks that your client provided you with a constructive feedback. On that same note, since your client is providing you with feedback and you know what things you can improve on, making sure that you continuously improve and upskill yourself is another way that you can improve your delegation skills. Learning that habit or getting into that habit will definitely train your brain to continuously identify tasks that you can delegate to yourself and improve your delegation skills at the same time improving your relationship with your client. As you improve your relationship and as you showcase what you are capable of as an executive assistant, your client will definitely start building trust to you. Building that trust is definitely very important. And for your client to be able to build that trust, you should be able to learn how to delegate things to yourself so that you can showcase your skills and your capability. Once you've already built that trust, you don't actually have to look for tasks to delegate to yourself because your client will also be improving as a delegator. Since they are realizing that, hey, my EA was able to delegate these things to herself, to him or herself, so I know that she can take on these tasks. So you don't have to wait. You don't have to continuously look for tasks to delegate for yourself because you've already showcased to your client that you can do all of these things. So all your client would do is when something comes up, the first thing that he's going to think of, my EA can take on this challenge and then he's going to give everything to you. So as you're growing and improving your delegation skills, your client is also improving as the delegator and you are the catalyst for your client to improve as a delegator. It's a win-win situation for both of you. 
an executive virtual assistant and an executive partnership is definitely not going to succeed if both of you don't have good skills in delegation. So if you are an executive virtual assistant, you have to make sure that you are good with your delegation skills so that if you onboard a client who's not a good delegator, then you can teach your client to be a good delegator. If you're new in the industry of an executive virtual assistant and you're not good at delegation, you should be partnered with a client who's good at, who's good at being a delegator. A partnership that both EA and executive are both not good with delegation skills is definitely going to be a big failure. So make sure that you learn together. And all of these things that I just discussed are the first few steps that you can take to improve your delegation skills. If you are an executive and you stumbled upon this video, I do have another video talking about how you as an executive can be a better delegator. Skills and tips or techniques that you can take to improve your delegation skills to your executive virtual assistant. All you have to do is check out the link somewhere here on the screen or it will be in the caption down below. If you are an aspiring executive virtual assistant and interested to be an executive VA and to learn more about this, this career or this industry, I do have an online course or a paid online course that teaches you the basics of how to be an executive virtual assistant. It is a self-paced online course. It consists of 16 modules with 16 hours worth of video tutorials as well as downloadable templates. All you have to do is Click the link in the caption down below where it says enroll here. I hope you learned a lot in this video and I hope you are able to continuously improve your executive virtual assistant skills. If you learned a lot from this video, please do hit the like, like button and hit on the subscribe button so that you will be alerted whenever I post new videos on a weekly basis. Thank you so much everyone for watching and I hope you have a great day.